Thank you all three of you for very inspiring thoughts. One question that we try to pose throughout the entire project, and that's what is it that we can do vis-à-vis -vis the current situation of war or political <coughs> situation? What is actually we can do to challenge prevailing hegemonic consensus about how the world is? War is somehow began um, in the 1990s. We didn't believe the problem could have arised from within democratic structures, but the situation has changed nowadays with more and more doubts about the system we're living in, in the West. What is it that we can do as artists and intellectuals? And what I'm also referring to is not all, only what you just mentioned, Boris, but a little exchange about the notion of awareness, because very many artists and intellectual, intellectuals would say, would say, well, our role is to at least point things out. You didn't believe that was, that was possible. What, what's your position about that? And the question is actually to all of you. What do you think we can possibly do? Well, I think as, as Boris' speech uh, clearly showed, um, ideas are, and, and, and he just spoke about it too, ideas are constructed, and uh, imagery about reality are, of course, constructed. Um, I think what I try to do, at least, is not to make yet another construction, but to show how things... Um, I, well, just, I would say to show how things are constructed, but that's not really true, you know, because of course I construct. But I think a, a, lot of, a lot of problems about how reality is represented can be avoided if the one who is speaking about reality clearly shows his own agenda before anything else. Um, if if, the, if the, the, the TV team that went to that uh, concentration camp would have shown, of course they can't, because that's, they can't, but if they would have shown, well, we are here in Bosnia and what we're looking for is something that reminds of the, of the Second World War, and you know what, we found this picture, then of course we would have heard a very different story, we would have actually heard a true story, whereas now we have seen <coughs> uh, a construction, a, a construction that was very useful for some people apparently. So what I at least try to do is not to create awareness like, oh, these people are in a concentration camp and they are dying here and, you know, but to show some of the agendas why we watch these images at all. Um, Boris talked about subjectivity and I think that's a, that's a very important task for a, a new way of imagery, or a new, not a new, but just a more adequate way of imagery. Um, we tend to think that we, uh, you know, it would be important to subjectify ourselves as viewers, to understand that we are viewers ourselves, that we have agendas, that, as I said, that we are actually the battlefield. And what we see are constructions, are, are, are weapons, really, to fight about that, for us or about <coughs> us. That's what I could say about it. I'll take the baby if you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago, we were in Montenegro and met the director of the whole network of museums in uh, Montenegro, uh, and um, he told us a story about his strategy for the new state. The state is uh, only 650,000 people, you know, new um, state emerging now, uh, looking for independence from Serbia. But, of course, uh, within this um, process of globalization, and he had a kind of a slogan for the uh, Montenegrinian uh, uh, strategy for the future. First, do nothing. <laughs> this was his answer. Because, you know, the doing uh, is, is already uh, is, is, um, is already guilty. Guilty because uh, we are not free to do what we want. There are only few patterns, and also politically, only few things you can do. And everybody does it, uh, uh, from the left, from the right, you know, everybody knows. And even all, all these states, new states in Croatia, 
uh, Bosnia and, and so on, people, they, they already know that they are not free, that this is not about freedom, because the who decides almost everything in their life is not, you know, not within the reach of their democratic power. So, they know that. <coughs> um, uh, to, to face this, this, the reality of not being free and, and being, uh, you know, uh, 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 not within the, the network of power of being, uh, being uh, completely hegemonized. And this is probably the first step. And what to do? Uh, like Lenin's, you know, question, uh, uh Today, probably it's the uh, first. Let's do nothing. Uh, let's 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 be become become aware. It's Buddhist. Oh. It's Buddhist. <laughs> it's probably Buddhist. Okay, but it is. Uh, let's let's become aware of of. Uh, of the empty, empty place of power we live in. This is my my answer. Probably you you would say something. I think it's very beautiful. <laughs> Do not think. Yeah. It's quite a suggestion. Would uh, anybody like to react or pose another question? Danila, question. Um, question to all three of you. How do you see the use of documents in art in relation to the use of documents in journalism? I mean, where is there a boundary somewhere and how, where is that? Well, I would say that during the last years, this boundary has very much blurred. I mean, uh, especially, let's say, Five years ago, during the last ten years, it already started in the 90s. Many artworks have used documents in a journalistic sense, in the sense of reportage, in the sense maybe of trying to, you know, uh, reintroduce reality into an uh, art world which had been completely evacuated, you know, during the 80s and so on. And this was a phase, I would say, of um, using documents as a sort of transparent window, so to speak, transparent window into reality. And uh, during this period, the boundary got completely blurred, I would say. But then um, a more reflexive phase set in, and, and this is also my opinion that you know the role of art in this is to start to reflect on the status of document. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> I wish my husband never did this. <laughs> yes, I, I think I said everything. You know, uh, to, to pressure it, to start to make those contradictions productive and not to simply take over journalistic modes of production because uh, journalists are better in doing it, you know, they have better resources, the camera isn't shaking, you know, all the time. They know all those standardized procedures of uh, producing journalistic evidence and so on, which artists usually, they don't have the resources to do it. So there's no point, I think, in mimicking this mode of production. Well, not only for technique, there is no point in mimicking. There is no point because it's just because it's, a, it's an economy. Uh, producing, as you say, evidence in a journalistic way is an economy in itself. And it, as Boris pointed out pretty well, I think it has little connection with reality. Um, in many cases, it, is a, uh, it, it has a little bit of connection with reality here, if, if that is needed for one or the other. You know, it's, it's very selective in what it shows, and, uh, and there is reasons for this, the way things are selected. Uh, what art can do, I guess, is uh, um, is actually mimicking, but mimicking while showing what is being mimicked. <coughs> it is it, it is mimicking, it is copying in a way, but um, while showing its own agenda. about 
about, I think, three years ago, um, the ITN report was shown uh, in full length. So you could see the ITN reporter uh, come to the um, fence and then say, no, 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 that skinny guy, we want you to come to the fence. He had a disease, actually. That's why he was skinny. And you saw that they were on the other side of the fence. It was all seeing the, the full length report saw uh, made you see the intention of uh, the report. So would you say that seeing that whole thing or showing that whole thing was an act of art? Well, if that would have been the purpose of their reportage, possibly, but of course this was a byproduct of what they actually did, what they were set out to do, what they were set out to do, which was to make this one single picture that would that would give the audience or, or his editors what they sent them out for. This was only a byproduct, you know, the, the making of, in a way. And there was no uh, conscious... Um, they set out to make this one picture that their editors wanted. Uh, and that's what they made. If then three years or five or ten years later you show the making of, I don't know if that makes art. That's a byproduct that discloses how uh, how the other certainly was not art, but I don't know if therefore it's art in itself. Well, I was, I, I think I was referring, of course I believe in awareness and, uh, and also in emptiness, by the way. Um, but um, awareness as very often created by, uh, by journalistic reportage or, or media in general, um, is, uh, as I come to realize more and more, is really very, very selective and it will, uh, it is a commodity in itself. Um, I think the most important export product of Africa these days is images of poverty. It's a far bigger. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's, I'm working in the Congo right now. It's the biggest industry. It's bigger than diamonds or coltan or whatever it is they talk about that they so called fight about. Uh, it's really. It's a generator. It, it's not the images themselves that are worth so much, but it's the, the generator, the economical generator of the biggest industry and the fa fastest growing industry in all of Africa. Imagery of poverty. Um, and of course that industry is totally held not by the poor. They have no nothing to say whatsoever over poverty, even if it, I believe it is their intellectual poverty. Uh, property, sorry, poverty is their intellectual property. It's their poverty. Yeah? But for some reason it's a natural phenomenon, and therefore photographers can take it and film it whenever they feel like it and where they feel like it. And NGOs will, or, you know, Charitable people in the world will do with it whatever they think that they should do. And that will for the part be about them. It will be about their beliefs and, and their needs and their historical references. Uh, so yeah, so so that that is what I can say about uh, awareness as created by media. I, I don't believe that very much. It's fun. I read the newspapers. You know, it's, it diverts me and. Uh, if I'm sad in the morning, then I can read some report, and then I know why I'm sad, for example. <laughs> but I don't think it really goes much further than that. It is so much uh, instrumentalized by, uh, <coughs> by a certain mode of truth production, and a certain truth that is necessary in some cases. People have written very, very good articles on this, by the way, that I could never uh, reproduce here. Uh, but, um, so that is as far as truth through, through journalism goes. And of course you can play your, or I could play, or anybody, you could play this one smarter journalist than the other ones, or, you know, that will show the hidden corners, or the hidden massacre, or the hidden this or that, or the hidden beauty, for that matter. Um, but that's so, uh, that's, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's uh, that is very selective as well. I think it's more, if we would want to talk about uh, awareness, then I would, rather try and be aware about all of this. But for me, anyway, that's the level I'm on. I'm sure there's other levels, but, yeah. Boris, I see you want to react, maybe. Probably. Um, 
I would say, uh, well, journalism uh, is always concerned with what happens, what has happened, and representation of the reality. But uh, the art um, should focus on what we, uh, what is the visibility in itself, what what can be made uh, visible, or what is what uh, the question of the frame uh, in, in in your example, you know, that uh, has disappeared uh, because it was not of it was not a journalist. For, uh, it was not so, so much interesting how much it tells about it. It is uh, to, to widen, let's say, this uh, space of the visible and uh, where journalist thinks he or she has found a document, the artist could ask whether it is a document and if it is a document of what it is a document and what are, let's say, the conditions of the possibility, of the visibility of this, uh, within the space in which the document emerges. It is not, it's not about document. It is, it is about what we see and what we, what's the most, uh, more important, what we don't see, what is cut off in this particular um, view. And uh, journalism is the view, <laughs> and art is the view of the view. Let's say I, I'm, I'm just trying, you know, to understand whether there is a possibility to, to uh, uh, kind of a sort of a critical uh, intervention of the art into the, into the not only into the reality but into the the uh, 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 way we produce and reproduce our public space. And this is, it's about the public space also. And it can break through, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, try to answer to your question because I kept thinking about it. It's a very good question. It's very difficult and I don't think there's any answer. I would like to suspend the answer. We can't say whether this ITN document is art or not, but it opens a way to think about current artistic practices or strategies because I was thinking, okay, what does it show, you know, this making of ITN document? It's a sort of documenting the process, you know? It's a, it's, it's a documentation of a production process, uh, of a social pro process, if you like, you know? The social process of interacting with the prisoners or maybe not prisoners, I don't know. And I, I thought about a format, a current format in the art world, which is a documentation of, let's say, a performance or a social process or something like that. Artists go out in the so-called reality, you know, in the social field, they interact with you know, somebody, marginalized groups or whoever, and the, the, the product, so to speak, which they bring back is a documentation of this pro process. And uh, I always ask myself, is it in how far is this art? What is the status of, let's say, this artistic practice? And now comparing it with the ITN material maybe offers interesting perspective on this type of artistic strategy because, um, um, for example, Boris Gross had a very interesting theory about this type of documentation. He said, this is the moment where art becomes biopolitical because the boundary between life and art is broken down. Life is so to speak, in, or art is integrated into life. Life is art. The authenticity of this material is determined by the amount of real life which is, so to speak, sucked up into the art. And I asked myself, um, wh what does it say now for this type of art? Um, what does it say about this boundary of life and art which is being broken down? And should we maybe consider this practice in analogy to the ITN material as a journalistic practice um, as opposed to an artistic one? Okay. So this is the sort of question which I want to put through my mind if you ask whether it's art or not. And I say it's not decided yet. Maybe it's even art. But then we have to start thinking about the art which we consider as art because it's being included in art institutions and so on in another way. Uh, 
what he added, uh, the like what is artistic documentation is then uh, is make how can I say make something already constructed, already coded. So whether <coughs> uh, where there's no life and you draw the original, you make things alive. That's where uh, docu artistic documentation, point of artistic documentation lies. And the, my question from that is then actually what makes art or what makes truth? It's not subjectivity, it's not only the intention of subject of who create, uh, who is creating this. Then uh, maybe <coughs> the reason why that subjectivity become question is then again there is possibility we again <coughs> falling into revisionism or relativism. So. I think subjectivity can, or the point of view of the one that makes the picture like this part that was apparently cut from the one picture he don't show. Uh, I think uh, so-called subjectivity or referring to yourself as being the one that views can actually make things objective because retraceable. You can retrace where an image comes from, where, why it is there, what is the economy of the image, etc. So what, what is the institution it functions in, etc. Uh, that is probably why, so that's a function of art obviously. Of, art can make things that are being represented by media that are very, you know, instrumentalized by this or that or the other uh, necessity can make it autonomous in a way. It's very old-fashioned, but it's, you can make things autonomous by, you can make uh, viewpoints of view autonomous just by clearly saying why it is you show it. That's probably why this reportage about, uh, that you just referred to, um, about the pictures there in Bosnia, uh, is then, you know, certainly does some of the things that art can do. It makes things once again autonomous, real, rather than a portrayal, a depiction, a, uh, it makes it from figurative into modernist art, reality. Um, it's, it's also in relation to your work. I, you know, and also related to this discussion of political distance, in, in your work I also saw a different potential in the sense that you almost get too involved. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you sort of project your fantasies of your girlfriend on this, you know, this refugee. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was actually wondering if, if you uh, play that out hard enough if you could go further in that. Because, for instance, this is artist Santiago Sierra, who, for instance, pays refugees, or alcoholics, or mm. gay prostitutes. Uh, he pays them uh, to make his uh, work of art. Mm. You know, he gives them the minimum wage, or he gives them just enough money to pay for a shot of heroin. Well, I think he just <laughs> shows an economical problem, let's say, or an and also an artistic one, for sure. No, but I was just wondering, should you should you go further in your work to, to because you, the bigger question was what can we do? Of course, you can do nothing. Mm. But in your work, I saw potential also to to make the viewer ashamed uh, for what you do uh, to, for instance, that girl, you know, because yeah, in the face of the expression of the sure. girl was not. <laughs> but you know, this, I think this guy's pulling that was shown so so perfectly well. I mean, I. If, you wouldn't have done it, I would have wished that I would think of it another time. Um, that how, how much re the representation of reality and of people suffering, dying, is instrumentalized to people that will find, that will buy that newspaper, you know, they, that, will, that will consume that information. Um, I don't think I do anything else, but then I made it visible that I did it. I don't think I did anything else than the ITM photographer that made, you know, an image that will appeal to his public. I made this image that appeals to me anyways, because I thought she was a very pretty girl, and she inde indeed made me think of my girlfriend at home. So I, in a way, I just copied that strategy, I think. Um, could I go further? 
Um, sure. Um, absolutely. <laughs> Would uh, Boris or Hito want to add something? I think it's still it's, um, important you know, to renegotiate or to keep negotiating this question and not simply to discard it, the question of truth and why. I mean, just to pursue what I said before, you know, about uh, political documentaries, this breaking down of the boundary between life and art and life and death is, as uh, George Agamben has repeatedly mentioned, one of the signs of the general state of exception. And to try to not reintroduce this border again, but to um, keep in mind that it still exists and that not all things are the same and not everything, every construction is like another one. That is, I think, important in order um, to uh, at least keep a perspective on this general state of exception. I think this could be one of the point of view from which it's still possible to keep a perspective on it, even if at the moment we are able to do nothing. And I think this is why it's really important not to completely give up the question, but to pursue it, even if it's at the moment a quite helpless sort of navigating around this question. <coughs> Maybe the, mm, the, the important thing is to keep it in mind for the meantime. Mm -hmm. Or would you like to add something? <laughs> I will need the floor to our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Before I thank everybody, I can't live with the idea of uh, just do nothing. I was trying to find a quote, but uh, somewhere in the text we kind of arguing why are we doing this and paraphrasing um, actually Negri and Hart saying, this kind, uh, this kind of effort is not only necessary, but possible. I tend to believe and to prove that we keep trying to do something. I just wanted to invite uh, everyone uh, next Saturday. There's a talk on crisis. It was subtitled Emergency and New Heroism with uh, three artists, Jeremiah Day, Klub Zwei, uh, and uh, theorist Jan Ferbrot. And I think it's uh, time for dinner for many of us. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming and great thanks to our guests for a very inspiring talk. Thank you.